Hello, and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover the commands for looking at files. There are many ways to view the contents of a file in Linux. The first command we are going to use is cat, C-A-T. If you specify cat and then the path to a file, Linux will display the entire contents of that file to the screen. In our first example, we will use cat to look at the file slash etsy slash hostname. And when we hit return, what you will see is that it will give you the name of this particular machine, which is Linux-VM. And obviously, your system name may be different. Let's take a look at another file called slash run slash crond.pid. When you hit the return key, it comes back with a number. And once again, your output is going to vary, but the important thing is that it returns some text, which is a bunch of numbers. Now, cat is short for concatenate, which means put things together. Let's use cat to perform what it was meant for and put some things together. So if you specify multiple file names for the cat command, it is going to have the system display all of the files to the screen one after the other. So if we do cat of run cron d dot pid space slash etsy hostname, what this is going to do is that it's going to show you the cron d dot pid file first and then the hostname afterwards. And sure enough, that's what we are expecting. By default, cat will display the output to the screen. But what if you want the output to go to a file instead of the screen? Well, we can use the redirect construct, which is the greater than symbol. This will basically take the contents that was going to the screen and put that into a file. So let's go ahead and rerun that last command. And instead of having the output go to the screen, Let's do the redirect and put that into a file. So I'm going to use the greater than, and then we're going to specify the name of a file that we want to go into. So we are going to name the file slash temp new file. And when you hit enter, notice that the command line came back, right? There's no output from that command. So let's go ahead and verify that the command did what we expected. We can use the cat command and take a look at slash temp slash new file. And sure enough, that is the output that we expected. Another thing we can do with a cat command is to append files to the end of one another. This is done with the append construct, which is two greater than symbols. Let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and take a look at another file that we have not looked at before. This is the Etsy time zone file. So this file for a Unix system determines the time zone that you're in. So for me, I am in the Rome time zone. And once again, your answer may be different. So let's go ahead and cat the time zone file and append it to the end of our slash temp slash new file file. All right, so notice we are using the double greater than symbol. All right, so once again, when we hit return, Linux gives us the prompt back with no feedback as to what it did. So let's go ahead and verify to see if it did what we expected it to do. So we can do cat of slash temp of new file. And sure enough, we see that it added the time zone information to the bottom of new file. One thing that you'll hear me say over and over again in these videos is that there are always more than one way to do anything in Linux. Let's take a look at other ways to look at files. Before we do that, let's look at another file, which is a system log file. So let's go ahead and cat var log syslog. And when we hit return, we get a whole bunch of things that are scrolling off the screen because this is a very long file. So this doesn't help, right? 
because we can't see most of the file. So let's take a look at a command that would display the file in a more useful manner. And that command is called more, M-O-R-E. So we can do a more of the same file again, the var log syslog. This time when we hit the enter key, what you will see is that the first page of the file will fill up the screen and then it would stop or pause at the bottom there and you'll see the status bar from the more command it says more and it gives you a percentage if you want to see the next line of the file you can basically hit the return key and subsequently hitting the return key will show you one line at a time and if you want to see the next page you can hit the F key for forward and the B key for backwards and you can notice the bottom status bar the percentage is going to go up or down depending on which direction we're going and you can also use the space bar to go forward one page at a time One other thing we can do within the more program is that we can search for text within this file. In order to do that, you need to hit the forward slash key. And once you have done that, notice the bottom status bar has now changed to a forward slash key. And then you can type in the keyword that you are looking for. So in this case, let's look for the word student. Okay, once you hit return, what you'll see is that it will show you uh, at some point lines that contain the word student in it. And you can go and look for the next line with the word student in it. All right. And when you're done looking at the file, you can hit the Q key to quit out of the program. Another way of looking at long files is by using the less command. The less command was historically created because the more command could only page forwards but not backwards. Then the two commands got into a leapfrog contest and both added features to upstage each other. There are definitely differences between them and I'll leave it as an exercise for you to experiment and find the differences. Let's see them in action. So let's use less to look at the same file, var log, syslog. And when we, we hit enter, it's the same idea is that we'll get the first page of that file and then it will stop on the bottom. You will get the status bar. In this case, it doesn't say more, it doesn't have a percentage sign. It gives you the name of the file instead. But the navigation is the same with more and less. You can use the enter key or return key to go forward one line at a time. You can use the space bar to go one page at a time. You can use the F key to go forward one page at a time. You can use the B key to go backwards one page at a time. And if you want to search for text, all you got to do is hit this forward slash and you can notice on the bottom status bar there, it changed to the forward slash. And then you just type in the term you want to look for. In this case, let's look for the uh, account name student again. And when you hit enter, it will find the next occurrence of the word student and then highlight the next occurrences. And same as with more, when you are done looking at the file, you can type the letter Q to quit. The next command we are going to look at is the head command. With head, you can look at just the top however many lines of a file you specify. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to head that same file again, var log syslog. And if I hit the enter key right now, it will show you the first 10 lines by default. And we can count those lines up uh, to verify. It looks like there's more, but they're actually long lines. So I'm going to use my mouse to double click. So that's line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So basically, there are 10 lines that get displayed by default. 
And you can specify actually the number of lines you want by typing the dash n for number option and then following by number. So we're going to look at the same file again, but this time we only want to take a look at the first three lines. So well, after we hit enter, there we go line one, two, and three. And by contrast, the next command, tail, does the opposite. It will show you the last few number of lines depending on what you want to see. So we can do tail var log syslog, and then it will show you 10 lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if you only want to see the last three lines, once again, you can do the dash n for number option, followed by number, and then var log syslog. And there you get the three last three lines of that file. A new construct that we are going to learn is called the pipe, and it's represented by the vertical bar. On the command line, it will look like this. Command 1, space, pipe, space, command 2. This will take the output of command 1 and feed it into command 2 as the input. Note that this is different than the redirect construct where the output will be redirected into a file. Whereas in a pipe, the output becomes the input for the next command. An example usage is ls or slash dev. I'm going to pipe it into the less command. This will list out all of the devices on your system, but only show you one page at a time. Pipes are really useful and powerful in the Linux world as you can string a series of commands one after the another to perform very complex functions. Let's say for example that you want to see lines 5 through 7 of a particular file. You can do the following command. cat slash password head dash n7 pipe to tail dash n3. Let's go ahead and read through this command line. The first part of this command before the pipe says to display the file slash etsy slash password and instead of dumping it out to the screen it is going to pipe it into the head command as an input and the head command is run with the dash n7 option which will only display the first seven line of its input. Then that output, instead of going to the screen, is once again piped into the tail command, where the tail command is only going to display the last three lines of that input. So when this command executes, it is only going to display lines five through seven of the Etsy password file onto the screen. All right. So that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about looking at the contents of files using the cat, head, tail, more, and less commands. We learned about redirect and appending data to files. And we also learned about the pipe construct which takes the output of one command and feeds it as input to the next command. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, Click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.